everyone. I'm James Milan. Welcome to this special episode of Talk of the Town. Um, I am joined to talk, uh, well, I am joined, first of all, by the DEI, that's Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, the DEI Director for the Town, Jillian Harvey, who <laughs> you are all familiar with, I'm sure, and also Margaret Creedle Thomas, who Hello. is the DEI Director for our Arlington Public Schools. Um, also, you're probably familiar with that because... Margaret has her own show, so to speak, here <laughs> yeah. um, at ACMI. But um, to be, uh, you know, first of all, really psyched to have you guys here. Thank you very much for taking the time. Thank yeah. you for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us. Yeah. We always like to talk to you, James. Yeah. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm very happy to speak to you guys as well. Um, and smiles all around, which is great and real. Yeah. Um, however, I also just want to say right away, I, I'm interested in looking at this last year more or less especially because margaret you've just finished your first full year at the mm -hmm. schools um uh, just this last year in your realm in the realm of diversity equity and inclusion in town and in the schools and i know that the news is not all good and the experience mm -hmm. is not all easy and light and roses by any means mm -hmm. and i'm interested in actually you know digging down a little bit on those things. So I hope that we can have a really kind of a, a conversation that's very much straight talk about progress made, hopefully for sure, um, and good things happening, but also give people a real sense of a little bit what you guys are up against in a sense, or at least, you know, what is composed of that plate that gets set in front of you every day. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like, first of all, to start by th that, on that theme in a sense, I'd like to mention, okay, we're speaking in the first week of August, mm -hmm. um, calendar just turned from <laughs> July to August. Yeah. Um, does summer have any meaning in your guys' work, you know, that's different from other times of the year, like it is for a lot of people, where they get to relax a little bit more, et cetera? Um, I think summer, I think summer for me is, is there's a little bit of slower pace and... <laughs> right there's planning because you got to plan for what's coming so like Jill and I have already been talking about like we have to let's um, put the calendar together mm -hmm. for the year like where are we going to do PD together what are some of the events that are happening in a town and happening in schools and I'm just gonna throw, jump in PD professional professional development, development right? sorry <laughs> um, and and so we have I think we've met like two or three times already in the summer. Mm -hmm. So it's like this pace might seem different and the work still has to get done because you have to prepare for when people do enter, really enter back. You, you know, you have community members that are on vacation and so summer's here, so people are away, but people are about to come back and want to hit the ground running. I remember as a teacher, my own years as a teacher, that, that turning of the page, as I was saying, to August, all of a sudden it, you feel it closing, that your summer closing in on you, right? Sorry, yeah. go ahead, Joel. Yeah, no, that same. Um, summer's gone. <laughs> um, blink of an eye. Um, but for me, I say the last couple of years, I keep saying, okay, July, like, I'm going to regroup, I'm going to put slow down put everything in place and then it's August and I'm like that didn't happen because nothing slowed down for me um people are on vacation but for some reason other things just pop up and it just continues to go so I'm really gonna try in the next couple weeks to not do what I've been doing um and actually slow down and do a lot of that planning um and it's gonna be a little different because I now have you know some help um mm -hmm. in the division which is great so I'm hoping that yeah talk about that just a little bit yeah so the DEI division has a new outreach and engagement coordinator um, it's been Teresa has been with us for just about a month and a half now um, so summer but it's I've already seen a difference in just being able to do more and engage with the community more even though it's summer and it's quieter but we're still you know working with the folks who are here um, and we're hopefully gonna be hiring an ADA coordinator too and that, again, will really help me balance my time in working with the Disability Commission and working with the town side um, to make sure things are moving along because mm -hmm. none of that stops, <laughs> even though it's summer. Right. Um, but getting some more hands to help, has, it's going to make a difference. So 
I'm hoping August will be more of that planning, but I feel like it's about to fly by too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something, I mean, definitely something you and I have talked about over over the months as you've been awaiting um, this, this, yeah. th this form of cavalry, I guess, <laughs> uh, coming. Glad to know that, that Teresa's in place and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure we'll be talking in DEI updates in the future uh, about her work. Um, but, uh, Margaret, let me ask you mm -hmm. to just kind of address, you know, Let's remind people just for a second before we dig in, um, in a little bit more into the weeds of your specific work in, in town. Let's remind everybody why you guys are here, in a sense, here in town doing the work that you're doing. What is DEI all about and what are the challenges that are kind of universal um, for Arlington, here in Arlington for you guys, everywhere else for the people who are working there and also common um, between the two of your jobs. Um, you want to take that and I can... It doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I, no, because I, 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 I think I start with the, the unrest that started to happen, the racial unrest that started to happen, and I feel as though institutions, whether you were an educational institution or a corporation, were really looking for... Or a uh, town. Or a town. They were looking for DEI directors, right, to help them to navigate whatever those inequities that were happening um, in those institutions and organizations um, because that, that racial and civil unrest was seeping in, right, was now coming into those institutions because what people were facing, you didn't know if it was a family member that, you know, an uh, incident happened to. So I, I feel like that's where, for me, that's where it started. Um, and in that now institutions are looking at how do we do belonging? How do we make people feel like they belong part of our organization and our community? How do we diversify? How do we value um, um, different identities and intersectionalities that we have, right? And and um, and then the equity of all of that, I feel like, is all encompassing of what we do. And it's really it's really big, and it's a really a magnitude. And um, you know, and I don't think it's just one person's job. I think it's all of our jobs to do. Yeah, um, agreed with everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I know for me, like the town that the town had made some steps to do equity work and you know hired me to be kind of another player in helping coordinate that um i think exactly like you know 2020 was a wild time so mm -hmm. with that a lot of immediate needs just surfaced and so i feel like i'm just now getting out of that reactionary cycle um and starting to put those plans in place and really see the vision that i came into my role with but it's taken me two years to now be able to make some of those steps um but i think with arlington the demographics are changing and if we're really trying to talk the talk and you know we say we value equity we value diversity we want people to feel like they belong here things need to change um because we know that folks don't feel like they belong here um and with this work in particular, at least I know municipal side, I think town, there's, it's a little, I mean, schools, it's a little different, but, um, you know, these types of roles have existed in the private sector and in nonprofits before, and they function differently. Mm -hmm. Government is a whole different story because you've got this, a lot of red tape and you have to follow rules and mm -hmm. you can't just do what you know is needed. You, you have, there's a process to that. Mm -hmm. um, and with DEI work as well, there's no guidelines. There's no state level department. So we're all in the process of figuring it out, but working together to do so and really working with our leadership. Because mm -hmm. if there's not that shared vision between the individual who's hired to help and the folks who have the power to really implement, mm -hmm. then it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. um, and like you said, Margaret, this isn't just one person's responsibility. It's, you know, explaining to the community at large that if you're saying you want these things, everyone plays a part right. and how to take ownership over that. Um, so I think that's the stage I feel like I'm starting to step into um, some of the plans that we have on the town side. And I think for you starting in the last, you know, you've been in your position about a year. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think 
the steps you've taken, really taking the time to listen and observe and soak in what's going on, even though you've been with the town for a long time in the school district, um, it's different to be able to have that role and to now see what needs to happen to make some of those changes. Yeah. I know you and we were talking about this earlier. Um, as I had started to do listening sessions, I really came to the conclusion that um, having a, an equity audit um, done would help us to really understand what our assets were mm -hmm. and what our obstructions or barriers were, and that through that audit, we can come to what some what what would those recommendations and suggestions would be. And and for me, that now gives me kind of like the seeds I need um, to know how to build that roadmap and starting to really and, and not to say we're starting because like Joe said, we we have been doing mm -hmm. um, a lot of great things in this in the school. Um, it, it's it also though helps to have that roadmap to really understand. Oh, yeah what those barriers are and how do we uproot them and how do we plant new things that will help to move the district in the place where it needs to be and where it wants to go, right? So we just, we have a new um, vision and mission statement, which is amazing because to me, that vision and mission statement, somebody said, to me, aren't you going to do a DEI mission statement? I'm like, I don't need to because it's, it's in there. the vision and oh, mission statement. Like it's there. It's it's that living be... there. And all I need to do is like go back to that vision and mission statement. It's there. Mm -hmm. um, and that really is that feels really good because I sometimes when you have separate vision and mission mm -hmm. statements in one organization mm -hmm. to me, that feels like it's silo work. And to know, for me to be able to say, no, our vision and mission statement is what DEI. It's one thing. Right, one, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that, that sounds really good. A um, couple of things, I just want to um, make sure uh, viewers understand equity audit, right? You just you just completed that, it's something you, I've talked with you yeah. about on a number of occasions. Can either one of you just briefly describe what is an, what an equity audit is? So um, an equity audit is, um, uh, where you could get uh, consultants who are experts in that field to look at your organization. They might ask for different data set points. Um, you would actually put together the scope of work that you want them to look mm -hmm, at. Mm -hmm. um, and then they ask you for those data set points. And, um, and also they would conduct what we call empathy interviews to kind of um, bring all of that information together and synthesize it for you and then really um, give you a great a greater picture of what is happening in your organization and then from there can make the rep recommendations for you to go forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and where the town, on the town side, I know school's wrapping years up. Um, we started ours, I think, end of May, June, mm -hmm. start of June. Mm -hmm. um, and time's flying, so who really knows? <laughs> um, but we have been in the data collection stage because there's, you know, in realizing there's a lot of data we don't have. And so that in itself is, you know, a red flag mm -hmm. <laughs> that, um, right. that we're not doing some things right because if we're not even collecting information to begin with, then how are we ever going to know what's wrong or how right. are we going to look right. at it? So we're in that stage right now and we'll be moving through the process, starting to do community engagement, focus groups. The town is focusing on um, three areas that ultimately the consultants we're working with, they have kind of a reverse engineered approach um, that the three areas we're looking at will help us really take a much larger picture at the town as a whole. So mm -hmm. we are looking at civic participation and voting, mm -hmm. um, housing inequality, and town workforce participation. So who is making up our employees um, mm -hmm. and what's their representation? Mm -hmm. Is it reflective of the community? And the community needs. Um, so we're we're diving. We're going to be starting to dive into some of the tough stuff soon. So mm -hmm. I'm excited for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, important. I mean, vital. Yeah. Um, so sounds like an audit, basically, in this in this area, is both a combination of assembling and possibly analyzing the numbers, mm -hmm. um, but then also including a whole element, which is much more of a human element, as you were saying, empathy interviews and things like that, where you're you're actually speaking to focus groups or individuals yeah. or whatever to get, again, a fuller picture of how not only what the numbers are, as you said, but also how it feels. 
-hmm. how it feels to be in, you know, in a place where you are only, you know, only 5% of the workforce looks right. like you or goes mm -hmm. home to the same place you, you do or something like that. Okay. Yeah, the consultants that we hired, um, Longview Education, um, they did it like a um, liberatory participation. So we had stakeholders sit on, um, there were like seven subgroups that they sat on and they looked at that data. So we had teachers and we had uh -huh. family members and um, we had administrators like looking at that mm. data. And so, and, and I really appreciated that because it wasn't just getting a company in just to right. look at the data and it, then they are telling us right. it was like it was a, a, a group effort of all of us just sitting and really kind of going through it um, and then what I appreciate about that is that that I can still continue to call on some of those stakeholders to um, maybe sit on other committees that have you know have been through the equity audit and that you know that would be the next phase of what are the recommendations and how are we going to implement some of these recommendations and to, that we can use some of those stakeholders to help us to figure out how to do that. Right. Yeah, yeah that sounds very, that sounds great because it's, it sounds like it's, a, it's a, a melding, a synthesis of the numbers and the people that you're, you know, otherwise doing the, your best to dig into. Mm -hmm. And here you have them kind of joining together yeah. and the people in real time for again representing different constituencies vital constituencies within the whole uh kind of absorbing first of all those numbers and then figuring out again what to do or helping to figure out what to do going forward yeah so let's talk about that for a sec um what to do going forward <laughs> um which i know so for you margaret you had to again spend a certain amount of time i remember talking to you at the you know about a year ago when you were about to embark on this and you knew that you were going to have to do a lot of listening you were going to have to just kind of figure uh, the the things out that you hadn't already had in your experience here in, in arlington because mm -hmm. it was not new to you as jill alluded to before but basically you were going to be like taking a lot in it sounds mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. um I don't know whether a year is enough for that or whatever, but I would imagine <laughs> there's a real impulse for you to actually start to see what you can do uh, with what you've learned. But 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 just bring us up to date with where with where you're at, and you know if you want to talk to us a little bit about the, this first year. I mean, I know it couldn't have been easy. No, I mean um, I think any I I feel like any new position, right? It's like um, trying to get your sea legs. Um, especially when you don't have a playbook. <laughs> yeah, right? can I just jump in? One, I want to say earlier, you you guys mentioned about DEI, and, and both of you are excellent representatives of this, but you were talking about how you're part of a support group of other, you know, people working yeah. DEI in other schools, yeah. and that, you know, they nobody's got more than five years of experience in that group, right? Yeah. And so it really is. You guys are trying to make this up as you, uh, not make it up, but you know, trying to mm -hmm. devise a way to uh, to move forward with this without having a playbook, but leaving one, I assume, or making one as you're going mm -hmm. so yeah. that you can, so that people coming <laughs> behind you can benefit from yeah, that. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the first year I've, I've learned a lot. Um, having that, that DEI JAG group, is, it's been really beneficial because like I don't have to reinvent the wheel with some resources. Mm -hmm. I can email and say, "Hey, I'm thinking about affinity groups. How did you do it?" And and what I appreciate is that everybody is willing to share their resources mm -hmm. um, of whatever they have, and so that was very helpful. Um, the first year was, you know, it was really about listening. I think for me, having that social work background it was somewhat hard sometimes to listen to the experiences and that i there was nothing i could do at the moment mm -hmm. um in regards to that experience um i think one of the things i'm learning is that i i want to be able now to listen to somebody's story and feel like i i can say this is where we're working on that joe mm -hmm. um and not just have someone just tell me their story but i can now feel like to say I know we're working on this and I, I know we're doing that um, because um, when somebody has to tell their story again, that emotion comes back. Um, and I realize that I don't want to um, traumatize somebody again mm -hmm. 
because I'm trying to get the information. Mm -hmm. So now I think I'm at a point where I'm like, I have enough information. What does what does this look like to make sure that stakeholders feel like they belong in Arlington? Stakeholders feel like they they're valued, that their identity is accepted in, in Arlington. And so I think I'm at that stage. And and also I'm also understanding that this work is not a quick work. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to do anything so quickly because you still can hurt people. So you want to make sure that you're pacing it in, in a way that the foundation is strong mm -hmm. of what you're building. Um, I really, you know, I really appreciate that I had, like Jill has been a support for me, um, that she had been in a role, um, you know, more than a year ahead of me. Um, and although we've done some work together, it was like, now we can really work together based on that she's mm -hmm. on the town side and I'm, I'm on the school side. Like even yesterday meeting, um, with the chief of police yesterday, that was a, you know, I, I think both of us le walked away feeling like that was a great conversation. We're going to be able to partner now and do some work with the school and the, in the community, mm -hmm. which is really important. Yeah, you know, I think a subtext of what I was just hearing you talking about, which is, you know, you how much you it, it's it's difficult for you to hear people's stories and not be able to respond with anything, and how much you're looking forward to being able to say, yeah, we're gonna we, we've got this in place or that, and I know you're doing exactly the same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. The subtext is the stories you're hearing are pain, are stories of pain, mm -hmm. um, and so. Um, and you said before, Jill, uh, a while ago um, in, in, in our talk today, you, you said, frankly, there are people in town who don't feel like they belong or who don't feel yeah. comfortable. At, you know, uh, I know you guys live with this every day, like this is your work every day, but, but share some of what, like, let, let's talk bluntly. I mean... Um, <laughs> What what's 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 what are people up against here? Because Arlington likes to think of itself a certain mm -hmm. way. Yeah, I, I think you have to believe someone's story when they tell you. I mm -hmm. think you have to believe when somebody says um, they've had a microaggression against them, or you know, discrimination, or they've been stereotyped. I, I think you have to like that's where I'm landing on. You have to believe somebody's story, and um, and sometimes people's intentions or, you know, they might not have met, right? And they, if you impacted somebody, mm -hmm. I feel like that's where I'm landing. You just have to believe, I have to believe Jill's story because right. that's her lived experience that, um, you know, there's, like you said, there's feelings that come along with that. And if I minimize that, the trust between me and Jill are, is gonna get eroded mm -hmm. and so, I, what I'm learning is that once Jill tells me her story, that's her story. Mm -hmm. And I have to now understand or figure out and say to Jill, like, how do I support you? What does this look like? You know, um, and I think those are some of the valuable lessons that I'm walking away from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I um, was to say, oh, sorry. No, I was no. to say, you said it. I think, um, you know, folks in town have the best of intentions and want to do the work. But I think there needs to be more listening and listening to listen, not listen to react, not listen to solve, not listen to fix, but just listening. Because once you're listening, you're validating people's experiences. And if you're letting that kind of settle in and marinate, you know, those folks who are sharing can also help lead you to the solutions. It's not a here, I'm telling you this, go fix it. It's a you need to start to work together and allow for more space to, for people to come to the table, but you need to build that trust first. You can't just say, I mean, even right now with the with the audit, we're in this trust building phase with community members that we know we don't hear from. Mm -hmm. Why don't we hear from them? There's a reason. So you can't just say, oh, we want you to be a part of this focus group so we can get your feelings and then send you on your way. Mm -hmm. Like you need to be brought into this process. You need to feel like you're not just being tokenized to, mm -hmm. to to check the box that right. we got your concerns right. and you're going right. to be out the door right. mm -hmm. but that you're a part of building the change um and we have a lot of folks in town again who have the best of intentions but i think the practices need to shift a little bit and there just needs to be more space for different voices at the table mm -hmm. do you think that um 
The fact that, as you've said a couple of times, um, that people in this town have the best of intentions. Um, <laughs> do you think that, that um, there's just a kind of obliviousness that can come in because of lack of contact, just of, of the, the fact that you people don't interact enough with each other or with people who are different, whose background, whose living situation, whose everything, whose sexual orientation, whatever it is, is different from theirs, that there's just not enough of that kind of natural interaction. Uh, I mean, I know there are a lot of factors, right? But mm -hmm. that, do you think, w when you say people have the best intentions in town, does it feel to you like, yeah, they do as a bunch of, I'm gonna say it, like a bunch of white liberal people mm -hmm. who just deal with other white liberal people. Yeah. Um, is... <laughs> yeah, I would say, I mean, Arlington, I, for me, it's a very well educated and the community members, again, I, people want and feel that they're doing the right thing and it is liberal and we have that mindset, but also being able to reckon with that it, things aren't perfect here. Your policies, our practices, everything we do, we do it, we all do it, is rooted in white supremacy That's culture. Right. So it's like, you have to be conscious of that. And I'm not mm -hmm. talking about like out here, you know, waving Nazi flags, all that. That's not no, what I'm no, talking about. We're talking not. about, you know, racism baked into all of our systems. Mm -hmm. But that includes simple things like our, you know, parking restrictions. Like if we take a really hard look at that, you're gonna realize why we have certain things in place and they've been functioning you mean parking intended. restrictions, like residential parking restrictions? Yeah. Or, or, uh -huh. yep. If you look at that, you know, why don't we want overnight parking? <laughs> why? Like, ask the questions, go a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and things go back to the way our neighborhoods are shaped and who's here and who belongs here. Um, and there's just that sense of, you know, you need to ask hard questions to yourself to your friends, to your family, mm -hmm. um, because it might seem like you're ready to do the work, mm -hmm. but until you're asking yourself those hard questions, you're not. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I, I think what she's getting at is that this work means that there's you're going to have to give up something. If you have privilege, you have to give up something that all of us can sit at the table. So if all of us doesn't, if all of us do not fit at the table, we have to erect the table in a way that all of us do. That means I might lose mm -hmm. maybe even where I sit. Maybe, you know, after a while we might be like, Margaret, you need to sit over there. I can't get fixated that I just want to sit here. I have to be able to be like, okay, yeah, if I sit over there, mm -hmm. then that means that Jill can be added to the table. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, and mm -hmm. I think that's the piece that people will have to work on. Of, And it's not so much what you're losing. Mm -hmm. What are you gaining? So if I s change where I sit and I'm sitting over there, I gain that Jill's voice is now at the table and now has been elevated. That's, that's I think, another way to look at it. It's like, and what do you a new get? perspective. Because yeah. you're in a new seat, so you're right. also seeing things differently. Right. And I say it all the time. Our roles, equity work, committing to it, it's not to maintain the status quo, you know? It's, we know there's a problem, <laughs> so... Mm -hmm. You just need to fix it. <laughs> you know, simple enough, right? In, simple enough. Uh, um, you know, the, what you just said, and um, what you just said reminded me of a question that I had earlier, and I decided to table it, but I'm bringing it back. Bring it back um, to the table. <laughs> and that is the fact that you guys are here in Arlington doing the work that you're doing, yeah. you, you you already well described the kind of circumstances and the circumstances of the last few years and the kind of the, the racial, racial tensions coming to a boil or at least being very visible and palpable to everybody, um, et cetera. So do you feel, like, do you think that the reaction of the town or the schools in saying, let's get ourselves let's 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 do something about this and let's get ourselves a couple of DEI directors at least to begin with did that come from fear or did it come from something more promising than that do you you know i don't i i mean on the school side i don't think it came from fear i think it came from this is something we need um i i for me i think of 
if I had to do this all over again, I, I would basically say, like, I would say that DEI directors should not step in a role by themselves. There, mm -hmm. there needs to be a department. And I have to say that, like, even if it's two other people, there just needs to be in a department that that director steps into. Um, because the work is really vast of what you have to do, right? And one, one it's not just one person. And, and so it's also educating people to be like, um, oh, we have a DEI director, so let me just reach out to Mark. <laughs> like, I've been meeting with people where I'm like, like okay. Why are we meeting? Yeah, right. <laughs> like, I'm like, okay, I don't think that's me. Um, and, and you, and you, and it's, mm, and, you, and you do listen. So mm, you listen because right. you're like, well, let me get the lay of what's happening. And, it, and then, um, and then it's like, well, it sounds like you should also bring in these people and you should talk to these people. So it's like, you're maneuvering the person in another direction. And what I'm realizing is that certain people felt like they're DEI directors. Everything's solved because <laughs> anything, right. DEI, mm -hmm. anti-racism, whatever. It'll it, end up it, on, it your, will end up on there. your desk they're and gonna you'll take care of it. it. And, right. and mm -hmm. then we've had to be like, uh, no. no. <laughs> right? And, the, and sometimes, you know, Jill and I laugh because I'll be like, no, but you, you should talk to Jill <laughs> because that's community or she'll get school stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. Because um, like you said, people have the best of intentions, but they don't, they're not clear on your guys' jobs, mm -hmm. your, the, the support that you need. And I'd like to, I'd also like to talk about that in a minute. Um, but yeah, again, it's not because anybody is, um, I don't know, thinking bad or small thoughts. It's just they're that they're not thoughts. really thinking. <laughs> it's just a, like they're not listening. Again, that, that's a, my tiny, our tiny little piece here at ACMI today is a little bit about what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, asking you guys in to listen a little bit and get a sense of what, again, it feels like from the work that you're doing. I think everybody would love to hear you guys say, ah, <laughs> I, you know, we took care of this and we have that program. And you know, that's not the reality of the situation here. And it's, it seems important to face that reality, to acknowledge it in order to be able to like actually make forward progress here. I mean, when I was talking to you about my garden analogy, you, you know, this was and, before we went yeah. on camera. <laughs> when I was, um, Go ahead. Sorry, yeah, when we were talking before we start, you know, cameras rolled, I was talking to you about I've been using garden analogy. If I was really to go into a garden, I would not be wearing this dress. I would be wearing my overalls, I have on my boots, I have on gloves. Like you, you have to dress also differently, mm -hmm. right? Because I know that I'm going to get dirty. Because I'm now, like I said, I'm like a cultivator. I'm assessing the soil. I'm saying that that does not grow well over there with that. That needs to be moved over here. And that's where we get the, don't move my roses, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And I'm saying, but your roses are gonna really grow even fuller if we like uprooted them and planted them over here, right? And so it's like, it's all of, that's what we do. Plus they hired you to be the gardener. Yeah. Right? yeah. In the center. <laughs> right. And now right. you're telling them, well, this is what we need to do. But right. then that's when you find out what they hired you to do was not give them bad news or not tell them the stuff mm -hmm. that, you know, they have to give up, like right. you said. I mm -hmm. think people, um, I feel personally, like I am not being honest with either of you or anybody doing this kind of work if I'm not willing to give something up. Mm -hmm. As a white man, if I'm not willing to move to a smaller part of the table or whatever it is that is a good analogy, uh, if I'm not willing to pay more money, if I'm not willing to get less money for my house or wh whatever it is, or have more people on the street in front, you know, all around me, it, it you know, these are, these are the tiny little things that mm -hmm. I can do. Um, but I do feel like I'm so glad that you guys have kind of named it as it is, that somebody has to, you, we have to, we, those who have much and have had things set up for us for a long time, yeah. we've, got, we've got to be willing to give things up. Yeah. And I think 
putting you guys in the position of reminding us <laughs> of that kind of collectively. That's tough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it yes. is. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Sure. <laughs> that's, well, I think that's when you find out, like, oh, you really don't want to sit you, through this work, you, right? You that's when I was like, oh, okay, you okay. Didn't and want I mean, that. I mean, okay. for me, for example, and I think we talked about this last fall, like working on the redistricting project, mm. that was a big reminder that, you know, things, I've been welcomed, people support my work, but then. Then it come, is, push comes to shove, this right? Is when a it comes change, to change. Mm -hmm. And it was not, folks weren't ready. When are you going to be ready? Mm -hmm. You just got to trust in. the process. Yeah. I mean, and nothing's permanent. I mean, we know we know that if the last few months haven't shown us that right. um, things that are laws are not permanent. Like right. anything can change, right. but you need to just be okay with taking a few steps forward. It might mean some steps back at some point. Usually that's how it goes, yeah. but you just got to try <laughs> and trust the folks who have been hired. I think that's also... Mm. Um, I was discussing this with someone, and I don't remember who, but I feel like it was this week. Um, just, you know, the town, the schools, I'm really impressed with our employees. Um, I'd say that's part of the reason I never left. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. really the, you must the have been people I work with. Mm -hmm. it, everyone's commitment and just desire to do their best and make the right changes but we're also responsive to community members. And so sometimes, you know, we're hired because we are knowledgeable and we can do the job and do the things, but then we're met with that resistance mm -hmm. and you have to deal with that or mm -hmm. work with that. Mm -hmm. But I have full faith in everyone who works in this town's competence to make the right changes. It's just a matter of also bringing community members along with us mm -hmm. and really making sure folks understand why we're doing it mm -hmm. um and that again that they're not losing something right. ultimately we're all gaining right and i think about i mean right now i'm the ada coordinator <laughs> hopefully you're hiring soon um <laughs> but you know looking at simple things like curb cuts right the intention is for people who have disabilities to have an right. easier time on sidewalks yeah. but we all take advantage right. of that mm -hmm. strollers so, strollers yeah. if you're just jogging right bikes if your knee it's hurts right. anything yeah. Yeah. right bikes yeah. anything so Good for everybody yeah. right for everyone and that's where i think we are all at like we understand we have to design from the margins and right. take that bigger view versus what we have now which is again everything has been functioning as intended Mm -hmm. All of our policies, all of our systems were intended to have that power imbalance and there would always be some type of oppression happening. Mm -hmm. So we need to undo that. It's not going to happen overnight. Right. It's not going to happen in two years, five years, right. 200 years maybe. I don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of work, but you need to just be able to say, yes, let's do it. Right. And let's let's talk about that. <clears throat> um, you know, I said, it's tough. And you guys went, yeah. <laughs> Right? Because, I mean, it, that's what we're talking about. It is. Yeah. And so, support. Mm -hmm. Where, how are you guys feeling? Where do you get it from? How much of it comes from? I, I assume it's helpful for you what you just said, that you really have a, a, a sense of um, confidence that the employees yeah. of the town are competent to and open to doing some work, real work in yeah. this area. So that must be helpful. But where where do you guys get the support that you obviously is essential for you to keep going. Yeah, I mean, I think it's important that, um, you know, my Dr. Holman, my superintendent supports um, this work in me. Um, the uh, I'm part of the DEI JAG group that I was telling you, Job Alike, um, that we meet once a month. That has been a tremendous support um, and that um, I have a coach mentor also, that um, it has been a thought partner for me. Um, it's also, you and know. And that's structured into your role? Like, like that's part of the, like, part of your budget, I guess. Yes, your, it's part of my budget. Get. That's great. Um, that's excellent. I thought it was just my first year. I thought it was just really important that I had somebody, you know, mm -hmm. although we might ha have expertise, it's, 
I, do, I also know I don't still know everything mm -hmm. and that it's really important for me to know that I do need that person to kind of um, coach me or guide me through, you know, any problems or practice that I have and that even if I have blind spots, at least that person can be like, okay, Margaret, you, you didn't look at it from this point of view. Um, and that the person that I have, um, you know, has stepped, has been in these roles, has been a former medical director, has been a DEI director, and mm -hmm. now is doing consultation. And so that's true. Um, and so I, that was really important. Um, you know, Jill is a support for me. Um, and then I have, you know, my friends and my family that are also my support systems because I have to know that when I get in my car to go home, <laughs> I'm going to leave this here and I need to just be home. And that's a support mm -hmm. because that's how you get rejuvenated again to want to kind of come back to work. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I would say similar. <laughs> um, you're my support. <laughs> um, but, but that's that's problematic in and of itself. Yeah. Simply, obviously, because we've been talking. I mean, you guys have very, very full plates and not that, I mean, a lot of it's quite draining. Mm -hmm. And so for you also then to have to be there for each other because nobody else, under, you know, it's can understand. Yeah. The, you know, anyway. It's a lot. I would say uh, similar to Margaret's kind of web of support, you know, for me, it's, absolutely like town leadership um the folks that i've been working with are town manager i know adam lash but mm -hmm. sandy mm -hmm. i've had a great relationship with sandy over the last couple of years as well um my supervisor hr chief larity like those individuals i know i can go to no matter what um i'd say the commissions i work with you know often i work very closely all the time with the chairs and that's rotating yearly mm -hmm. um so i've been able to build relationships and just folks who have dealt with some of the challenges things that come at me come at them as well so being able to share those experiences with them um a year and a half ago i co-founded kind of the dei municipal side for mm -hmm. folks who have a job like title like mine mm -hmm. um and that's been absolutely like just a game changer mm. you know we meet twice a month um but we have like a slack channel we everyone has each other's phone numbers there's just to be able to talk about things that other folks have no idea <laughs> no idea what you're dealing with um in particular i think most folks in these roles are also people of color mm -hmm. and that's just usually an added layer because you're also usually one of not many mm -hmm. in the spaces mm -hmm. you're in mm -hmm. um and that's a different aspect of the job because it's also personal <laughs> it you you say you go home and you you know come back rejuvenated half the time i'm still doing the work at home and it's not rejuvenating right. because i it's personal i turn on the tv and the news is something terrible and you have to show up the next day, <laughs> and she sometimes does something folks... I don't do. I'm not turning on. The, I don't turn on the news. Right. Sometimes I don't. Okay. Well, I like to watch Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy, and usually the news is on first, so I have to catch the end of it. Um, <laughs> I wait for Twitter. See, I, wait I for, don't even use Twitter. I wait for Twitter to, to blow up. But but I, but, yeah. but 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 let, let let's talk about you know not just support systems that you may find around you a web like you said, but. And this is something that has been a theme of conversations I've had with mm -hmm. you in the past, Jill. What are your personal practices as well? I mean, we've talked, we talk, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk always about self-help. Um, a lot of talk about mm -hmm. self-help a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, but there, first of all, you need to get the support of your supervisors and employers and peers, et cetera, for the things that you do for self-help. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um but what, what are those in your guys' particular cases? What are the things that you're, you know, the practices that you have that really help in these? In the so <laughs> I'd say the practices for me, I know it's a struggle. Oops, my mic, sorry. Um, I know it's a struggle to keep it routine. Um, that for me, it looks like yoga, meditation, taking a break during the day to just go outside and stand up. Um, working out, but when things start to get crazy, that's the that first thing to go, goes right? Away. Yeah. I mean, for me, I recognize I have a bad cycle. Every third week of the month, 
it's super busy. I have a lot of late night meetings and it's gone and I have to reset and I'm like, oh, okay, how do I break this? But now that I now have more support within the division, I'm seeing that start to break, but that's been a few years. Like that's not great, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but it's pushing yourself to do it. Like to not answer that email that came in at 11 o'clock at night because the world's not on fire. You'll be okay. Yeah, and um, people should not be emailing you at 11 o'clock at night. Let's happens. just say that. I mean, sometimes they get them from me because I'm like, oh, I have time to actually respond. Oh, okay, fair <laughs> um, enough. But still, it's like knowing how to shut off, and mm. it takes practice. Oh, I learned that this year. I, I, I learn it, and then I unlearn it. I uh, know. <laughs> I put on my... Um, silence notifications now after a certain time Mm -hmm. because it's easy because you know you can still have certain people that can get through right Mm -hmm. right right you get Uh, to choose who who yeah i get to choose and and that was that started to be important for me because i needed a break um and when i was home i needed to be home um and so and i had never done that before and i was like oh i'm gonna put my silence notifications on and that was just really important for me i needed a mental rest. I needed the physical rest. Um, I, I, you know, I miss exercising. I used to do boxing. I miss it. I, there's like, uh, you know, the meetings that you have. I think that's the other thing that people do not understand. The meetings that you're, mm-hmm. t- you're asked to go to, you're like, um, and it's like, it's like you said, you know, somebody's like, well, why don't you work out in the morning? I'm like, Cause I'm tired. I'm, right. <laughs> I slept for four hours. Right. I don't have right. energy. And the, and the thing is, when you work, when I work out, it's like I want to take a shower and go to bed. Yeah. So that doesn't work for mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of thing. Where... Right. And you can't just change the way that, you know the things that work for you and your biorhythms, right. etc. Right. Because it will be more convenient right. for exactly. the schedule that you have. So I'm, you know, I'm missing boxing. So boxing was helping with that kind of like I had a stressful day. It was a real tough get day, it out. and I could hit a bag and, and get it mm-hmm. out. And I haven't been able to go for the last two years. Um, so you know, it's that. It's that. The other thing is that I've also learned that I need to eat properly. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, you know, I, I knew what my triggers were after a while. So, um, like, like my peers at school was like, oh, Margaret's brought out this, the Swedish fishes because, <laughs> because now I'm stressed that's and right. now it's like, that's your comfort you know, and, that, and like that Swedish fish just really just tastes good in my mouth and, um, and you know, diet Pepsi, like mm-hmm. between, and I was, and I started drinking a lot of diet Pepsi, and I was just like, okay, so this, this is a is, sign. This right. is a sign that I need to kind of pull back. Um, Sundays are really sacred for me. You know, that's the that's the day that I go to church. That's the day I spend with my family. That's the day that I can have lunch with them. That's the day I can, like, get a little bit of a nap in, right? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. just kind of. You know, that's that regroup day for me that I can then be like, okay, um, maybe around five o'clock I'll think about opening the laptop and then looking at an email. Um, so, so right. So it's Sunday day, but even Sunday, Sacred Sunday, mm-hmm. is gonna you're gonna you're gonna have to Sunday look scary. at things. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> they sneak in. Well, no, and I think Jill said it best. It's like you're really you're, you're not constantly you're not constantly off. You have to you be have intentional to be about mm-hmm. being off. And she said it is, and I had to say that to myself. Is anything on fire? Is anybody bleeding? Is mm-hmm. anybody hurt? No. That can wait until tomorrow. Yeah. So I know that there are a lot of people, you know, who might be listening to this uh, who can relate to that. But I do think it's important because there are a lot of other people who do get to leave work every day and they just get to leave. And however hard it is that they work during those hours, on their way home, they're not still thinking about everything. They're not carrying it with them. They're not going to be accessed, you know, at 8, 9, 10 at night, et cetera. So I just, again, uh, in terms of giving people a more accurate idea of what it is like to take on TEI work in this town and others, mm-hmm. um, I think it's, uh, and uh, obviously I support and salute you both for developing and recognize the importance of you developing ways to leave work at work in some way, or at least to leave work 
-hmm. mentally, you know, uh, emotionally, psychically, spiritually, <laughs> actually leave work <laughs> for some period of time every mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. um, but I bet it's, you know, I bet it's, it, it, it's it just doesn't happen as often as is healthy for yeah. you, you know, yeah. healthy for yeah. you. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I, um, you know, w this was originally intended to be a half hour conversation. <laughs> um, it, I feel fine personally about the fact that we blew right through that and, and yeah. we will have spoken for almost an hour by the time that we're done because I really um, will just reiterate that um, though I get to speak to each of you periodically throughout the year and though I'm generally aware of the work that you're doing mm -hmm. and um, the fact that all of us benefit from the work of a few means that we should at the very least understand what that what some of what the cost is mm -hmm. to those few mm -hmm. um, as well as figuring out ways to support you guys in your work um, so I uh, will just say for my, me personally um, I will always want to do what I can to let you know how much I appreciate um, oh, the work that you guys do <laughs> um, seriously I want to live in a town where this where we're further along than we are um, and I'm relying on you guys yeah. um, and so are a lot of other people yeah so uh, so you know I want to just kind of get that out there and um, and say that I'd love to also do this each year at least once a year just to kind of check in with you guys okay how did things look yeah. um, you know compared to because a lot of the time when I'm talking to you during the during the the normal course of the year we're doing updates or whatever we're mm -hmm. talking about the mm -hmm. events that are coming up the things that have happened etc mm -hmm. we don't have time really to talk about your work as work uh, as we have today so yeah. again I want to thank you both for taking that time and I uh, hope that you've enjoyed the conversation oh, as yeah. I have. <laughs> always. Yeah, um, yeah. I, it was, a, really it was always a good conversation. Yeah. All right. Any, any parting words for, for, for our audience? Just one thing that, you know, I think you asked me what people can do to support us. Mm. Mm. I think the one thing I'm thinking about is really ask us how we're doing. And mean it. And mean it. Mm -hmm. Like, ask us how we are doing. And, and, and if there's anything that that person can do, right? And if we just say, no, we're good, like, but, mm -hmm. but really ask, right? I think that would be like the one helpful thing. Mm -hmm. Right, know that you're not, you know, you may be doing your job by yourself, but hopefully you don't, you, you know, you'll feel a little less alone in doing so if you mm -hmm. have people who are coming, you know, if it's genuine yeah. Uh, yeah. coming, you know, from that place, okay. I'm sure. Yeah. Anything that you would like to, to remind people of, Jill? Um, be patient. <laughs> this work is a marathon, not mm -hmm. a sprint. Um, you know, and especially in this arena, you know, mm -hmm. for a town, for schools, mm -hmm. it takes time. Yeah. And I said it earlier, there's a lot of undoing yeah. in that it takes time yeah. so don't think that we're you know twiddling our thumbs um, because you've asked for something or we've said we're committing to this and you don't see the immediate. you don't see the immediate yeah mm. yeah. Um, yeah it's been you know we get I, I don't know if you get but I, I get the complaints I get the you're not doing that for this right. or that but then it's also those random you know voicemails that I know I don't check often, sorry everyone, um, or those emails, or a letter in the mail that's just a thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That, for people I have never heard from, yeah. not the frequent flyers that I hear from once a week, but yeah. someone who I've never encountered, never met, but they, you know, saw a program or they participated in something and it was helpful. Yeah. So like those gentle reminders are really great. Um, cause it is long, it's hard and you know, we don't want to burn out. <laughs> <laughs> a little appreciation at the very least yeah. goes a long way. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, I will say just one thing back to you guys. Um, you just said to the audience, you know, to the community, be patient mm -hmm. and correctly. So you said, you know, ask us how we're doing and mean it. 
Good, both of those good. And I will say to you guys, stay hopeful. Do your best because we really, mm -hmm. we really need you to be yeah. Yeah. there, yeah. and we yeah. really want to be ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. again, let's let, let let let's hope that we all get on board for the work it, itself, but but stay hopeful. Yeah. Yeah. I think I am hopeful. <laughs> Here, I mean, I I'll say it like just working with other communities. Arlington is different. Um, work is good. Work is happening, and the folks, I'd say leadership, they they have it in their mind. So as long as it stays mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. we're good. Yeah. But I've definitely, you know, folks in other towns and cities have really been met with not having that support, and it's it's not great. Yeah. So I'm I am hopeful because I do think we're on the right track. Yeah. Great. Well, she is Jillian Harvey. She is the DEI director <laughs> for the town, and she is Margaret Creedle Thomas, who does the same for Arlington Public Schools. This has been a, basically a DEI year in review uh, mm -hmm. episode of Talk of the Town. Um, I hope you have hung in there um, for the whole conversation <laughs> and are listening to these words now, because I think it would have been worth your while to do so. Hope you feel the same way. I'm James Milan. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you another time. Thank you.